Hi, welcome along to Taking the Biz. In this tutorial for AQA, A-level students, we're going to have a look at Bartlett and Gauchal's international strategies, a theory they developed to explain how firms might be able to successfully target international markets. So on the two axes of the matrix that Bartlett and Gauchal developed, it illustrates to us two of the pressures that firms are under as they try to go from being domestic organisations to multinational organisations. And the first of those pressures is the pressure for local responsiveness. So as a firm tries to target different overseas markets, how much pressure does that firm face to be locally responsive? As it moves into different countries, how much pressure is there to customise the business's products and services to the individual needs of each nation. Are those pressures quite high? Does the business need to tailor its product offerings each time it moves into a new market? Or are those pressures quite low and the firm might be able to take the same goods and services that it's produced and designed for its domestic market and roll those out country after country after country with minimal customization of them? The second pressure that firms might face is the pressure for global integration. So for some firms, this pressure might be quite high. The pressure to keep costs down, the pressure to achieve economies of scale, the pressure to try and retain centralised control over key functions of the business in order to keep costs low, to have centralised R&D to keep costs down, to have centralised marketing to keep costs down, to have production restricted to a few very specifically designed locations where labour will be cheap, where land will be cheap and economies of scale can be maximised. For some firms that pressure is quite high. For other firms that pressure is less so and they can develop more satellites of the organisation spread across more different countries in the world and each of those satellites can be given more autonomy, more power and decisions can be decentralised to them and functions can be decentralised like marketing and R&D so that things can be done, although at a greater cost, on a more localised level in those different markets. So that gives us four different strategies, the first of which was the international strategy which Bala and Gauchal said might be adopted by firms who thought that the pressure for local responsiveness was low, that they could take standardised products from their domestic market and sell those same products overseas. But this time, the pressure for global integration was also quite low. So rather than having to be very price competitive, rather than having to drive down unit costs, rather than having to keep decision making and the functions of the business very centralised, the firm could invest more in localised decision making, setting up more regional production, more regional supply chains, maybe more regional marketing strategies or R&D functions, which may cost the firm money, but this might be the firm's best way of successfully targeting overseas markets. A second strategy called the global strategy, slightly different. This time firms might still identify that the pressures for local responsiveness are low and that they can still keep the same generic product range and transplant that onto overseas markets. But this time the pressure for global integration is identified as being much higher. The firm needs to try and centralise as many of its functions as possible. Maybe there might be some more localised production, but functions like marketing and R&D might be kept more centralised and conducted by the business's head office, probably in their original domestic location. This way we're going to try and maximise economies of scale as much as we can. We're going to try and give less power, less autonomy, less decision making to satellites of the business that might operate in all of the different overseas markets that we operate in and we're going to try and keep as much of the business's decision making and operational strategies as centralised as possible so that we can maximise economies of scale, keep costs down as much as we can so we can be more price competitive when selling in international markets. Now a multi-domestic strategy 
is where the local responsiveness pressures become much higher. So consumers in the different international markets that we're trying to target have more localized, specific needs. So the firm has to respond to that by trying to change its strategy so that the goods and services that it's offering are customized, are specialized for the needs of the customers in each of those different geographic markets. But that's slightly easier to do because the pressures the firm is under for global integration are less. So more can be decentralized to different nations where satellites of the business are working. More can be invested into localized marketing. More can be invested into localized R&D. Now the danger is that these satellites of the organization might end up operating on too rogue a basis and the, the core competencies of the organization might get lost as each individual satellite of the organization starts making its own decisions and implementing its own strategies. But it might be an effective way of dealing with the pressures for greater local responsiveness. Perhaps the most challenging strategy to make work is the transnational strategy, because it's almost like the pressures the firm is under here are almost in tension with one another. The firm's identified that the need for local responsiveness is quite high, that consumers in the different markets it wishes to target have their own tastes and preferences. But at the same time, whilst the firm is trying to customise its goods and services and meet those local requirements, the pressure for global integration is high. The firm is under increasing pressure to centralise its functions, to keep costs down, to maximize economies of scale. And maximizing economies of scale at the same time as developing goods and services that are more specialized for one geographic market is a challenging thing to do to make it work. The firm's got to try and identify what economies of scale it might be able to utilize. So as it develops goods and services for different geographic markets, Maybe some of the components could be shared amongst all of those goods and services, regardless of how they're customized. So the firm is able to still secure some economies of scale through the purchasing of components that are then used to create goods that are differentiated for different markets. So there's Bartlett and Gauchard's four different strategies. The one that the firm adopts is dependent on what pressures that firm is under whether the pressures are high or low to be locally responsive, and whether the pressures are high or low to keep costs down as you enter international markets and retain a more globally integrated, uniform organization. Hope your revision is going well. We'll see you soon for some more tutorials. Keep on taking the beers.